What up gamers? I'm Jason. I'm Julie. And today on Dice and Dragons we are going to be reviewing Project Elite, published by Simon Games and Artipia Games, and it is designed by Konstantinos Kokinis and Sotirios Santillas. If you guys do happen to watch our video, please let me know if I got the pronunciation of your names right in the comments below. Now I will toss it over to Julie, who's going to tell you more about the game itself. So this is a cooperative one to six player game uh, that is intended for ages 14 and above and plays in, I'd say about 60 minutes. I definitely have to agree with you. I could see it going longer with uh, six players, but I do feel that uh, with our plays, and we're going to get one more play in before we do the review, we definitely got under that 60 minute mark. I'd say we were close to 30 to 45, so we can definitely see how Four, five players, probably right around 60. Six could put you a little over the top. That's mainly with the admin stuff, but uh, you'll see that when we I was going to say, that's not the play. actual play time because play yeah. time is quite dictated by, you know, 16 minutes of, of play, unless there are more scenarios in the different... Uh, Expansion. Different, yeah. Well... There may be some changes, we don't know yet. This is just going to be a review of the core game. Now, with regards to the age, Julie, what do you think? 14, do you think it could get away a little younger or not so sure? I'd, I'd leave it at 14, I think it's a good age. No, I think definitely 14, maybe, and I stress maybe 12. I would say 13, 14 is really the age for the game. They got the range perfect with this one because what you're doing in the game is you will be playing an intense combat round that lasts two minutes because you are Earth's last hope. You are Project Elite. You must defend the planet, well, defend the last of humanity because it destroyed our solar system. So there is only Earth left. So defend humanity from the aliens from Proxima Centauri or the proxies as you make your last stand. And the game has eight different missions. Now each mission has a different setup and objective. You must complete your objective and survive. All players must survive within eight rounds and make it back to base in order to complete your objective. Now the combat rounds are played in a fast, intense two minutes. So as Julie said, you got 16 minutes of gameplay actually with everything else being around the setup and administration. So anything to add, Julie? Did I get well, it all? Yeah, I'd say the, the, you said get back to base. I said, I'd add get back to base before the monsters do. Right? Yes, that's true. The If a monster gets into your base, you lose. So keep that in mind. You can lose on the last turn if a monster triggers and gets into the base and you cannot defeat them. Don't worry, we'll cover all of that in the how to play. So what time is it? Time to grab your drink. I'm going to grab my elite best friend. <laughs> We're going to take it to the table one more time. Yep, looking forward to getting this back to the table, and then uh, we'll get into the expansions in the future at some point. Mm -hmm. Now let's take a look at the components for Project Elite. We'll start with the rule book. What I do like about the back is we've got a nice rules summary, and it's got a little bit more detail than what you get on a rules reference card, which is really good. Overall, no complaints about the layout. We get a Nice introduction to the world. The QR code is here in case you want to download the app and use the timer on your phone as well as get some music. List of all the components. Then a fairly well detailed rule book in terms of graphics and visuals. One thing that I do like, which really helps explain the game. Didn't have any issues figuring out the game from the book. Now we'll start with taking a look at the different members of Project Elite. The last thing we're going to take a look at is the board. You'll see why when I unfold it. So we'll start with their player board. So we've got Kinjay, whose special ability is whenever you kill an alien within range one, so right up close, you may move to its space. We've got Kara, whose ability is suppressive fire, so you can prevent a specific symbol on these dice, which is this one. We'll talk about it quickly in a moment. And you can do that by spending one of six tokens that you have. Now, these are the tokens that are right here. I put two of them out just to remind myself that those were Kara's tokens. Now we've got Gilgamesh, who starts with one less die, and you may reroll one miss each time you activate a weapon. We've got Akosha with quick reflexes. At the end of the action phase, you may move up to three spaces or activate a weapon without any dice on it for free. 
So we've got Voker with his Martian speed suit, which lets him move two spaces instead of one. And lastly, Garrett with the Mark III exoskeleton, which means if you get pushed, an alien does not damage you. Now we've got the different colors of bases to help tell their miniatures apart. We also have some colored cubes. They all match the colors of the bases to go in the spaces, track their health while you're playing the game. Now we'll actually just put Garrett back at the bottom to avoid any confusion as we'll go through their miniatures now in order. So here is Kinjay. As you can see, plenty of detail on the mini, just the nice texturing on the pants. So if you're a painter, it's gonna look really good and that's the same for all the minis. You can see a lot of detail on Kara's powered armor. I love the fact that she's got that big bad sword. Here we've got Gilgamesh. Looking all beefy. We've got Akosha. And I do love that pose just with the twin guns. Definitely suits her character. We've got Voker. Pretty cool. And lastly, we've got Garrod with his Gatling gun. Now before we take a look at the dice, I just want to point out that we've got these different objective tokens that are going to show up in the game. There's four types, Recon, Capture, Demolition, and Extermination. They get dealt out randomly. They have different values on all of them. Sometimes you got to play four dice. Sometimes you can get away with three. Now here we just have 1d6, standard. We have quite a few of them as you're going to need a lot of them during play. Next we have the proprietary dice, which has movement, one repair, one search, one alien movement, meaning you gotta move an alien figure, has to be done before anything else. We have the recon symbol on it as well. And then the assault symbol to activate your gun. Now both dice are the same, there are a lot of them as well, but uh, you get the idea as to what you're gonna be doing in terms of rolling these action dice. Then when you gotta shoot or do something else, you roll these dice here. Now there we've got the timer. And while we're looking at the timer, we've got the three different spawn tokens that come with it, as well as three search tokens. Now these are not numbered, you can place them anywhere. We've got the search cards, which differ from different weapons that you can get. Some of them may only require one die to activate. Others may be uh, attachments to boost your weapon, such as increased range, it lowers it uh, to hit. You may get some cool items like a launch pack so you fly to a specific space. You can also get med packs and other things as well. Or great weapon here like the boss killer, which for each hit removes two health. So it gives you an idea as to why you want to search. And there's a med pack. There's different things you can find. You may even find some power armor. Now at the start of the game, you're going to deal out these basic weapons. So as you can see, we have a total of seven of them. So there's always going to be one left out. So there'll be some level. Well, no, not one left out. Actually, I think that's wrong. We should have eight of them. I'm guessing that one of them is actually sitting in the search deck. It's fairly easy to mix them up, but uh, I'll take a quick look at it. Don't want to waste too much time trying to locate the card. If it's not, then perhaps it decided to hide out in the box. Ah, there it is, eight. So we do have our eight basic weapons. Now, what you're gonna do at the start of every game is pay on the number of players. Number of players plus two is the amount of basic weapons you deal out, and then you get to pick from them. So in a full six player game, everyone really gets to pick their own weapon. Some require one die to activate, some require two. Now you can go through your whole game just with a basic weapon if you can't search. Now once you defeat a boss, you may get some alien tech, which may be some cool items. And for example, with this one, for the rest of this action, you may reroll any hit results once, sorry. Yeah, any hit results once. I don't know why you'd wanna, oh, any results. So it could even be misses. You could get some armor. You could even get some cool alien weapons. So you can see here, it'll lock a die, but then you only need one die to constantly keep setting it off. So pretty cool. Now here we've got the swarm cards. So this only affects 
these three minis right here. So there are shooters, runners, and biters. It tells you how many, what location, and there's a chance that the enemies may trigger right away. So we'll take a look at their mini since we talked about them. So here's a mini for the shooter. Now, unlike a lot of other Simon games, there are no multiple sculpts for the villains, the enemies. There are just one. There's your biter. Lots of detail. And then here's your runner. So a little reminiscent of Zombicide, but not quite. You also have these swarm stats cards, which represent the standard act, well, health and actions, abilities that they can do, as well as their movement for the three different swarm minions. Now we'll take a look at what we have here. These are just six reference cards. Goes through everything you need to do to play the game. Also, how to set up the difficulty as well as how to handle the boss spawns on different difficulty levels. So once again, six of them. We have the event cards, which will go next to the board. And now these are all numbered, as you can see in the bottom here. And depending on your difficulty, you'll use certain ones. On easy, you really don't have too many effects, as you're going to be using primarily from this section. Whereas the harder it gets, the more of these you're going to use. And the more players, the more dice you have to lock in order to get rid of the effects permanently. But that may not be something you want to do, depending on how you're doing with your objectives and what you're trying to get done. Now, we've got the boss miniatures, and before we do that, we'll take a look at the boss spawn cards. So you'll notice there's a whole whack of all clear cards because we want to make it random. So in terms of what we've got, and I'll just put these here and we'll take a look at the bosses as we Pick them up, so we got the Mind Eater, which means all aliens within range, sorry, within range three, move one space. So that's this big bad right here. Does look similar to a guy from uh, Invader. We've got the Thrax, who deals tons of damage. His ability, ability is heroes within range three suffer one damage. Heroes within range one suffer an extra damage. So he can just start whooping on your characters very quickly. We've got the reanimated Harrier, which means you've got to move aliens a total of four spaces combined. It can be pretty devastating depending on how many are left and how close they are to your base. We have the Spear Sting, which heroes with, with heroes within range two will suffer a damage. So there's that thing. Don't like how the fact that it's got a very human-like face. Very creepy. We've got the Naga, who places slime tokens on adjacent alien paths, which actually increase the movement of any alien along those slime tracks. We've got the Dread Spit, which places acid tokens, which affects where our heroes can go, how they'll take damage in certain spaces. And if there is a hero in that space, well, guess what? You're suffering damage right away. We've got the Ashar, who rolls one hit die for each hero within range four. And each hero suffers one damage on three plus. So he's just great at shooting up everyone. And really from this card, he looks a lot like a Krogan. And then we got the Gut Slug, who's probably my least favorite because you must draw a spawn card and use its adjacent spaces to spawn enemies around it, which makes it quite nasty. Now we just have some tokens here. So three health, one health, the acid token to mark the space, the slime token, we also have the target tokens, which I have not seen come into play as of yet. Now we also have these trap tokens, which are for specific missions. I'm figuring that these tokens are also for a very specific mission. We also have these exploration tokens, which don't come into play regular, regularly. They are also for a certain mission. So you might find an alien relic and you can keep this token space up and spend two guns to remove it from the map. So I guess you gotta explore and capture things in that mission. Julie and I haven't gotten that far. And lastly, we wanted to take a look at the board. Now the board does have a fairly big layout, but it is double-sided. So as you can see, we got one side, which is the laboratory, the other side, which is the crash site. And I don't wanna fold it all the way out, but we'll give you a nice section of it. So, so you can just get a good idea as to what you're gonna be doing and what the board looks like. You can see some of the spawn locations and we'll do the same thing for the laboratory. Oh, it's folded over so it doesn't work out as well. So we'll flip it all the way out. So once it's all the way out now, you can see 
very large board and I went ahead and bumped the camera. So sorry for that motion there, everything's stable, but we got you a good look at the board and there you have it. Those are the components for Project Elite. Now keep it right here as I'll be coming back at you with our setup, then followed by a how to play. Now let's teach you how to set up Project Elite. So I am doing the crash site setup, and this is a little unorthodox. As you can see, the board is rather large. So I did get rid of one sixth of the board to give myself a space for the heroes and the cards in order to really be able to teach you the game as well as set it up. So and just so you know, any enemies that move into this area, I'm just going to remove. Also anything that would normally be set up in this area, we won't see as well. So keep that in mind as I go into the setup. Now the first thing we're gonna do, one of the easiest things is you take the three alien spawn points, put them upside down, mix them all up, and then you place them at their different locations. Now the same thing goes for the three search tokens. There's another one in here. So this one is just gonna get put off to the side. Now we need to equip our members of Project Elite. We've got Kosha in yellow, Voker rocking out in blue. And please note, this is a one player slash two player setup. The main difference with a one player setup is you will only be using five dice and spawning one card. So keep that in mind. We'll talk about it uh, as we play. If we were playing with two players, for example, well, we'd be spawning some more cards. You can actually see that stuff right here on the setup. So as you'll notice, it's on easy, one swarm spawn card per player. On medium, it's one swarm spawn card per player, but still two boss cards. So what we will do is a medium setup. Now, depending on the mission that you're playing, you will refer to the rule book. It's got a list of the missions. So the one I'm setting up is the first mission, extermination. We must deal out random extermination tiles and they go for crash site. They are placed on locations seven, nine, and 10. So I've dealt out three. I'll put some, you'll notice that 10 is here. So seven, nine, and 10. So did I hide the other one? Yeah, so we've got 10 and nine. Now, just for the sake of teaching you this game, I'm gonna move both of these from their original setup and I'm gonna place them at 11 and six. So as remember, that's not accurate. It'd be seven, nine, and 10, but I'm setting it up like this just for the how to play. Now, if there were six players, cause I follow the one to two player setup, well, there'd be more of these tokens out there. You could potentially even fill the board. So we've got our tokens. Our objective is extermination. We have our members of Project Elite. We have our action dice. We have some damage dice. We have the references for our spawns. Well, the alien hordes, we've got just the, the references for what their abilities are. I do pretty much show them by heart, but I wanna keep them nearby. Next, what we need to do is shuffle up our basic weapons and get our mercenaries, well, not our mercenaries, our members of Project Elite equipped for battle. So we deal two plus a number of players. So even in a one player game, it's gonna be four because you got two characters. So I count as two players. Possibly it could be three. I don't see what the harm is in doing four. Now you get to decide what you wanna keep. I'm gonna keep the Hurricane, which has range three. You roll three dice and you hit on five plus. Now, don't like this rep gun. You only hit on six plus, which is hard. Firestorm, range one, but it's two die on five plus. You've got the XO shotgun, which is range one, but it's two die on three plus. So we'll take the XO shotgun. As we equip our weapons, the other ones are removed. I'm not gonna be using them. We can get better weapons from the search deck, however, or the alien deck. 
Now, the last thing that we need to do is set up, according to difficulty, we need to set up the event deck. So the event deck normally is laid out in a specific way and I'll show you, but just to keep things clean, I'm gonna have it stacked on top of itself. So what we need is currently cards, card 012016. I'm just referring to this, so. Cards 20 to 24 up. Ah. It wasn't quite clear from this, so we need cards 20 to 24. So we've got cards 24, 23, 22, 21, and 20. So you'll notice that the Bosch Rush 25 is not included. And then we add three random from 01 to 16. So we're, a lot of these ones you'll see here are no effect, nothing happens. We get rid of them. We've got one to 16. And just to make my life easier a little bit, I'm gonna take the top three, which are one, two, and three. What you'd normally do is shuffle these up and deal out a random three, but I'm already uh, just planning a little bit ahead to put everything away. Now the event deck is made up of these eight cards. The game is played over eight rounds. If you do not complete your objective within eight rounds, you will lose the game. So we shuffle these up and then normally, what you do is you would place them as, if you don't complete, as events like this, if they're not completed, they will stay in effect. You'd place them like this down next to the board. As that's not really possible for me, what I'm going to do is place them as so, and just flip them over and reveal them. It's the best way to do it for this setup. So as you can see, it's not overly challenging. The game is set up. We've got our timer. Our locations are all ready to go. So the only thing we need to do now is then go ahead and follow follow the all these phases here. So use our reference card and get the game started. So that being said, I'm gonna be right back as I'll teach you how to play Project Elite. Now let's teach you how to play Project Elite. Now for those of you that may have skipped over our setup, I left one sixth of the board free because this is a large board in order to have a place to have my characters as well as some of the cards. And I'm just considering this a dead space and I will try to avoid using the number three spawn. Now how we will go through teaching you the game is we will follow all the steps on the card. Before we get into the action phase, we will go over how you will execute some actions and what certain symbols mean and then we will execute the full action phase we are going to go through two or three of these phases depending on what we cover in order to make sure you get a good grasp of the game now that being said let's get started with the first phase which is the event phase so you must reveal the first event card this one is speedy spawn so at the end of the alien ability step all aliens in a spawn point move to spaces so you notice here's the step which is 4A, meaning right now it's not gonna come into play, but it will later on. So next, we must reveal a Swarm Spawn card, as this is a one player game, it's only gonna be one of them. So the first thing we get here is two shooters at three, and I'm gonna ignore this one because three just, we don't wanna use it if avoidable. What I would do is, however, take two shooters, I've got one right here, Let's grab the other one. They would need to be placed in any of these spawn points. Now we've got this triangle here, which means that they trigger imme immediately with their ability and movement. If there was a hero within, and we'll just take a look at what their ability is. Roll one hit die for each hero within range three. They would suffer one damage on a four plus. So as Volker was there, they would perform their ability, roll the die, luckily he didn't take any damage. The other the other character would get a chance too. Afterwards, they perform their move step and you must move them along the arrows. So that's just giving you an idea as to how that would work, especially when you have the triangle. So I'm just gonna put this off camera, not gonna be performing anything with the shooters. Instead, let's draw the second card. So here we get four biters at one, something that's much more conducive to the setup. So I'll I'll put this off camera. We spawn the four biters 
filling the spawn spaces around one. And lucky for us, we do not have anything that triggers, so they are not rushing us or anything like that. Now we must go to the boss spawn step. As this is medium difficulty, we always spawn two cards. So our first card is all clear. No boss is making their appearance. Our second card is also all clear. So no boss is making their appearance. We'll put Volker back in the base. Now that's good. It's actually gonna let us sh showcase what we wanna do a little easier. So we're now at the action phase. For the action phase, you need to set up the timer, which is already ready to go at two minutes. So we've got two minutes to go through that phase. Now, before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at these different die symbols. So we have the movement one. So once this is rolled, you can spend it and move one space. Volker can move two spaces because of his special ability. Now you have the gun, so that can be spent in conjunction with a search. If you do that, you can then trigger your gun's ability, spending both dice and rolling. That's a great roll because that's two hits right there. Now all swarm enemies, so these beige ones have only one health. If I was in range, that would let me kill two of them. I can hit anything within that range of three. Now, if I happen to roll the alien movement dice before anything else, I must move an alien. Then I could execute any of the other actions on the die. Now, if I have an active search, I may choose to search right away. In that case, I flip the token over, immediately draw three search cards, and I would then be able to add one to my hand. In this case, I'm gonna take the rupture gun, which is fairly interesting because strong gun, but shoots only in a straight line. So straight lines in this game are considered to be straight diagonals. So anything diagonally and orthogonally. So along that axis is what would be shooting in a straight line, meaning you can't shoot someone you know that's here with the rupture gun. So that's one way to search. The other option is to take this, put on your player, and at the end of the action phase, because things are so frantic, you can go through the search deck and draw an item. So that is another option. Now you may be wondering what this repair symbol has to do. Well, the repair and the recon symbol for, which is, I'm trying to find it right here. For this game, do not come into play unless they're on one of these cards, the event cards, which are those that have the caution tape around them, meaning that once your die is placed there, it's locked. So in a three-player game, a recon symbol would be valid. A repair symbol could be valid. It's now locked for all of this round, but that's the only way to get rid of these event cards and not have multiples of them in play. Same thing goes for these exterminations. Once a die has been placed there, you will not be able to get it back. It is locked there for the full action round. You'll also notice here on your character boards, if you happen to take a certain amount of damage, your die will become locked limiting the amount of actions that you can take. If you get healed, you can unlock your dice. So we've really covered all the different things that we can do. Now, the last thing would be if we have a boss. So let's say I ended up defeating this boss. Well, then I'd have a choice of drawing right away three alien tech cards and selecting them, weapons or items, which go here. Don't have much room for items right now, but you get the picture. Or I can wait till the end of the round and draw the three alien tech cards. Well, we're in a really good spot right now, actually, in terms of what we're doing. Not too much stuff on the board. Fair bit of uh, leeway in terms of what we want to do. Maybe even want to move out there, shoot some guys, and come back. We've got two minutes to roll the dice as fast as we can. So... Let's get going. Now, in a one-player game, these five dice may be used across both characters. And what I'll be doing is rolling them and then just moving them off as they've been used or placing them on weapons, items, or even events. Now, 
I'm really trying to teach you how to play the game. I may not be making the most optimal decisions, so cut me some slack. I'm starting the timer. Let's do this. All right, so I'm gonna use this with Volker to move two, one, two. Actually, cannot do that. First thing I have to move, do is move the alien. Alien one, Volker moves one, two. So these are used. I will keep this search. Now, any dice that have been used or any ones I don't wanna use, I can re-roll. So I'm gonna roll these again. Well, we can get Volker to move one, two. I can then move a kosher one. We've got two of these exterminations, which means actually not a bad idea to maybe get rid of that. I also can trigger the search with Volker, so these are used. We'll use the search, pick up the token, and I'm actually going to save at least one of them. We'll re-roll the rest, see what we get. Volker will move one, two, getting us closer to some of these aliens. This is going to be useless. The search, well, I might want to save that. Actually, the search, we'll put on the gun. Move a kosher one. Reroll the other dice. So, huh, nothing great, but I can start working on the exterminate, which locks all of that up. And now I really have to try to get a movement or move an alien to me. So now he is within range three. Well, he was already within range three, but we'll just do that. I will trigger the gun. Gonna roll. And it's a five plus. So I do success successfully take out one of the biters. Now I'm running out of time. So I really wanna maybe try to get two more guns. Got a gun, take another move. Try to get this resolved. So we have resolved the exterminate in this phase. And I can stop rolling whenever I want. I might wanna move a kosher again. So let's see what we get. We got the repair. Which I can place on the event, but in a one to two player game, I need two dice to firmly get rid of that event, which I did not successfully do. So now going into the next round, it will still be present. We're now at the end of the action phase. If I happen to have any dice that I just rolled that were on a gun that could be activated, I could use it. There's also the quick reflexes for Akosha. So since there's no one in range, I can't trigger the gun, but I can move three spaces. One, two, three. Which means she'll be near a search location. We'll execute the search with Voker. So we find these Scar Makers weapons, a meta pack and power armor, just for space reasons. I also like guns. I'll take the two scar makers, which pretty cool. Two dice, three plus. Got to get two guns. We also succeeded in exterminating one of these, so I'm just going to remove it. Or I can place it at the base, just to say that we got it. The goal is to exterminate the three nests in this mission and get back to base. Now, my setup isn't exact. It should be a little different, so it does look a little easier than it should. The search token will now get placed back on the map as we reset everything. We will now then go to the alien ability step. So the ability of the biters is to attack anyone within range one. They may not. So we go to the alien movement step. You know that the biters move two. So they will move two along the path. We get to decide the path. Now, if this biter had an extra movement, for example, he could push me, and he can push me into any space, and I would take one damage from that push. So keep that in mind. Now, Garrett doesn't, so it's a nice advantage. But we've got the speedy spawn, so at the end of the alien ability step, well, luckily for us, there was no alien in the spawn points at the alien ability step. They only moved in there during the movement phase. So we've done everything. We check for victory and defeat conditions. Return dice. So any dice that were locked actually would be returned now. We can do it earlier. I haven't gone to a mission where we need to roll after the fact, or we'll have a character that has ability that would be rolled after the fact. So I don't see what the big deal is, is, is picking up the dice earlier, but that's something to keep in mind, especially if this resolves that event, so you'll probably want to take it back. I think it's more if you've got locked die on your guns. In any case, we've done our first round. 
Now our time to do our second round. So this effect will still be in play. So I'm gonna just put it down here for the moment. We'll reveal the second event with his exhaustion. Hero special abilities have no effect. Well, that is really crappy. And we wanna get rid of that. So let's actually put both of these out here now. We need to reveal the spawn card. In this case is three runners around one and they activate. So we'll grab runners, spawn them around one. I'm gonna place them here because I do not want them going towards three. Uh, but I will have to put one of them. It's gonna go that way. So as you can see, he moves one because they have the triangle, so it activates right away. So I move him one, two, and I can push it out of his way so he doesn't push him again. And we go three, as we don't want to push these guys ahead two. If they get into our base, even one of them, we lose. Now, one, two, three, one, two, three. So we've moved the enemies. We now must go to the boss spawn to get an all clear. And we actually do have to spawn a boss. You know, so they trigger right away. So we get the Reanimated Harrier, now to the side where he ends up, we take one of these dice, we roll it. You'll notice that one, two means one, three, four means two, five, six means three. So he spawns here, and his ability is move any aliens a total number of four spaces. Well, kind of want to bring this guy into attack range. So we're going to move him one, two. We can move this guy actually here, three and four. Now, we'll leave his card out over here. It's a total of four health. So it's probably a good idea to take him down. We've now gone through everything. It's now time for us to restart our action phase, grab the action dice, and let's get to work. So unfortunately, we gotta move two aliens right away. So I'm gonna move him one, two. You can execute both of them. We have the search. Akosh is just gonna grab the search. We have the repair. Uh, don't necessarily wanna go to the speedy spawn. We have other things we wanna do. So we're going to keep one of these searches for the guns, and let's go ahead and reroll the rest. So we got the double guns. So in this case, we're gonna use the scar makers, which are two dice of three plus. Not using either of those. So one and a two, terrible roll. These are all refreshed. Let's see what we get here. Well, we gotta move an alien up, move this character. We're gonna move a kosher up so she can start doing some stuff. This search is something we don't need. We'll want the wrench so we can get some guns, attack some people. Don't like any of these things. However, we can move. I don't like any of these movements that I want to do. So as you can see, you gotta really move here. It's, it can get tricky. So we're gonna use a cautious thing. We have to move an alien, so we'll move him one. So two dice, three plus. Let's see what we get. We only got one hit, now we can decide to do a damage to the Harrier, which is what I'm gonna do in this case. We get some more dice to re-roll. Hopefully we'll be able to get something better going on here. Well, I've got gun, so three die, five plus. Let's see what we get. Nothing. So we'll take everything back. Oof, we gotta move these guys, so we're gonna move the ones over here. We'll move him one, him one. Gun in a search, running out of time here. So we got two hits, so we can put total three damage on the Harrier. Hopefully, be able to get one last roll in. Gun in a search. Uh, so we'll do that. Have to move an alien. Now, as my gun was ready, I do get one last shot with it. So I will be able to defeat, I get two of these, I can defeat the human Harrier, or the reanimated Harrier. I can hit anything within range three. These runners are dangerous. I'll get the guy in the back. So he's been defeated. Now Volker gets to take three alien tech cards. And the make things simple, I would just take the item. Not in love with either of these weapons. So at the end of the action phase, you may move up to three spaces. Pretty cool ability. We'll just slide over the swarm card. 
these two things get discarded. Now, Akosha can, fortunately, her special ability has no, no effect because right now, otherwise, she'd be able to roll two dice, three plus, get rid of both of those, but we have this nasty exhaustion thing that's still in effect that we weren't able to get rid of. Well, didn't actually try to get rid of it. We are close here at the end, but I used my stuff to shoot to kill the Harrier instead. So as you can see, decisions really matter in the game. We did get her search, so we'll resolve her search. We'll reveal what we get. And ooh, heat gun roll of six equals plus one to hit. So always like getting more weapons. That's just the way it works. Now we'd go through and resolve, and as they were gonna move basically off the board, we'd from me an ability, these guys would move and end up somewhere here. So I'm just gonna Take them off. We will resolve the alien ability step. So now we're within range, which is a problem. So this card we can discard. So we have the biter. So roll one hit die for each hero within range one. Each hero suffers one damage on a four plus. So we're gonna roll two hit dice and one character takes the hit. Be a kosher just because it's harder for her to get her dies locked. Now, we have decided to trigger the biter, so he's gonna move, but don't forget he's gonna move along the pattern. So he's gonna push. So I'm gonna push ourselves out of the way here, move one, two. But that does mean Akosha takes another damage. Now we have to trigger the runner, who's just gonna run. So he moves one, two, three. So as you can see, they're not getting close to our base. Things aren't looking great. Now I said we might do a Third round of this, but I think we're uh, we're pretty good actually. We at the end of the alien ability step, no one was in a spawn point, so we would then go back through and draw another event. So move any alien, any aliens, a total of three spaces combined. So this will be our last one that we go through. I can actually just discard this one after executing it, and that's only a space thing. Normally you'd have it face up on the board, but they have to move a total of three spaces combined. So that's one, that's two, that's three. So they're getting close to our base. It's it's challenging, plus you would have some guys moving over here. If we had this space, it wouldn't be as bad, but whew, you can see it's tricky. Spawn the alien card, three runners around two. So we'll put them as far as I can, but they do activate. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And you can see that's from the symbol. We will spawn two boss cards. So I'm just gonna flip them over right away. So the all clear, which is nice. Fortunately, we do get the gut slug. Spawns at two, so we have to spawn him here. Now we draw a spawn card for him as we trigger his ability, which is three runners at three. Well, we don't use three, but we spawn three runners adjacent to him, and their abilities trigger right away. So we've got runners. I'm just gonna put them on the other side to make my life, <laughs> in terms of teaching the game, a little easier. And they move right away. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So there we've gone ahead and conducted the spawn phase. It's now our activation phase. So hopefully we'll do a little bit better this time. And we'll show you how to get rid of one of the events. And I think that's gonna then wrap this up and Julie and I will come back at you with our review. So let's get this started. All right, so we've got a lot of movement and a search and I did neglect to put the search token back, so. Whoops, we'll keep the search. One, two, uh, she'll move back one just because. Have to move an alien up, move the gut slug. Have a search, don't wanna use it. I'm gonna move back one. Actually no, Kosha will move one, pick that up with the search. 
So we had a gun and a recon. Now, we do have the recon symbol, which means we can trigger this gun, the heat gun, because it can use either or, so it's one die and a four plus. Poof, we got rid of one dude. Now we've got this, so we can trigger that with three dice. Try to clean, clean house over there. So we get two hits. Got two of them out of there. We got another recon symbol, so we can try that again. That's range two, so we're good. Got the biter. So we're starting to make some headway here. As you can see, we're starting to run a little bit out of time. Well, we've got two repair tokens here. Oh, forgot about this. And we got this. I might have only rolled one die. It doesn't really matter. So we have the two repair token symbol, so we can get rid of that. Let's roll. These again, so nothing but search and movement. Move one, try again. Maybe we'll get a gun, so we can trigger this one. Three on five plus, maybe we'll shoot up the gut slug. Got one hit on him. Try again. Oh, we'll try on this one. Place this here. And no good. Couldn't get rid of the last one, so we won't be able to trigger any hero abilities. We'd go through the end phase, so just draw the three search. Cool stuff, but to make things simple, I just take a med pack, resolve the alien's ability phase. These guys just move, so I'll take them off the map because they move off the map. This guy. This is just going to not have an ability, he just moves, so the Gut Slug, we'd have to use his spawn, so we get two Biters, which activate immediately around him. So we don't want to get hit, so one, two, but this guy goes, oh, we could have put him here, so he moves one, two, don't want him to charge into us, and the Gut Slug moves, one, two. And we then have to check our wind conditions. Keep going, we've gone through, this will be our fourth round, so we're now halfway through the game with only one objective done. And in reality, we probably would have lost because the amount of aliens in here. But you get the idea as to how you're gonna be playing the game. And I was definitely playing slowly because I'm trying to talk through what I'm doing and teach the game. Hope you enjoyed watching this partial playthrough slash how to play of Project Elite. And now we'll be coming back at you with our review of the game. So Project Elite from Simon and Artipia Games. This is one of a few real-time cooperative games that we have. What did you think of it? Well, this is the first one I play, so I thought the concept was pretty cool. Well, it's, like... it's not the first one. Just once we played Five Minute Dungeon, but it's the first like this that you play, and same for me as well. Yeah, with the time, with the two minute timer that you play, it's a continuous thing. Five Minute Dungeon, you play once, and then you got a new game. Yes. This is sixteen minutes of play split up uh, into two minute rounds. It's like a boxing match almost. Yeah, that's actually a really good way to put it because you must survive the onslaught or if like we did in one of the games, get some great rolls and beat your opponent to submission. <laughs> okay then. Uh, so I thought it was I thought it was interesting. I mean uh, it's it's an interesting concept and I I, I had fun playing it. Um, it you know it has a lot of the things that I like about games. It's cooperative. There's some dice chucking uh, you've you know you've got uh, you've got your different characters that have abilities right so that's always fun I like the ability I played uh, two of the girls one I never remember names I'm really bad at well that. they're on the back of the box so you can take a quick peek it's Akosha and not Kara you played Kinje yeah so I, I do actually really like that that's actually a plus in my opinion having these names on the back of the box helps us reviewers. <laughs> so Akosha was my favorite, I think, because uh, it allows an action at she allows an action at the end uh, that allows you to either move or to attack again after you're done, even though you didn't have dice attributed. So that helped us out a couple times. Yes, and it's like when I played, I played Volker and uh, Garrett, and Volker's ability to move twice on one movement was crucial and he was definitely the most fun character out of the two that I played. Uh, the other character Gilgamesh seemed really cool, the ability to re-roll 
uh, a miss, but you start with a locked die with something that I wasn't really keen on, at least in a two-player game, but I could definitely see that with the right equipment and in a game of six players, he'd probably be the guy that's going to be running around just blasting things and not trying to focus on any objectives. Yeah. Kenji was was okay. Her her ability allows you to move into a space of a monster that's one space away that you kill. Um, I honestly didn't use it all that much. Um, it just happened that way with the different missions that we had. I was you know focused on objectives and things like that. So oh, and one thing to mention. The game, I think we both agree, and we'll talk about it more, at two players to six players is very different. That ability in a six-player game, when you have to spawn six cards, could definitely be something that you're like, destroy, keep moving, because it'll let you progress. And you could really move around the map strictly by just shooting enemies. And you can basically reroll all your movement die, which would be pretty cool. But in a game where there's only two spawn cards, you can get a more spread out situation. So I do think that some of the powers aren't as effective. Yeah. Uh, but that being said, I mean, it's fun. Oh, I forgot to mention one of the things that I also like about this game is that it has minis. So I'm pretty yes. consistent about the kind of game that I like, I guess. She likes miniatures. Also, the one thing I do notice, we could play a game that's like creepier as a creepier theme. But if it's creepy miniatures, you're kind of like, I just want to knock them off the table. Now, she wouldn't do it, but I mean, that's kind of the mentality that I think we we both have. It I was pretty impressed scary. with the... Uh, the Thryx, that, that <laughs> thing with the claws. Yes, that was definitely fairly terrifying. And uh, I must say, I love the implementation of the bosses in this because there are multiple bosses, they do different things, and while they're very disruptive to your game, I find that it's not the, they're not that extreme level of threat that having eight of them really makes the game uh, impossible. Now, I was going to say, you played one player. Do you have a comment about it? Yeah, so when I played one player, this is me getting used to the game. Now, I didn't love it because uh, you're rolling five dice, so you get essentially one extra die, but you can attribute your dice to both characters. Now, as it was my first play, I'm sure that it would get better the more that I uh, played it, and it's definitely playable. I did lose quite badly, actually, uh, in my first play. It just wasn't moving right and was not uh, defending properly. You almost want to have one character that is handling objectives while the other is playing defense, in my opinion. I much preferred playing the game with two players. You really get the spirit of the rapid rolling, making decisions, and the challenge of having to resolve that alien icon before you resolve your other uh, abilities comes into play when all of a sudden, you know, I'm planning something and then, whoops, the alien's no longer in my range. That's something that you don't really have when you're playing solo. Yep. So, I mean, I didn't really have anything negative to say uh, about the game. I mean, it wasn't uh, overly difficult and it's not complex to play. I, I had fun playing it. No, the only negative that I would say is uh, the map. I really like the, we play primarily on the Crash Light. Simple reason why we play Crash Light. A lot easier to play the game at two players because you're going this way instead of lengthwise, which does make the game a little bit more complicated to have good positioning and move around so that's just a negative it's would... a negative because your wife has short arms i mean <laughs> it, uh, we could sit on opposite ends of the table and both play from that end it's, it it's still not as comfortable i just didn't love the setup that being said i do like the, the laboratory map i like the way that it works i think that in a game with six players it would actually shine a little bit more but i definitely had more fun playing crash Light with you it just was more conducive to the way we like to play games and the way we're you know, we sit next to each other at a better table presence. So that's a negative that I found. Uh, the other thing that I didn't really like about the game is the uh, the timer. It's okay. It's not great. Now, you can download the app for the game. Now, something that we did not do. Uh, main reason why is we like to take pictures to share on social media. So we weren't going to be running the app. Well, you do get a timer as well as some cool ambient music. So that's something that I would definitely recommend that someone downloads during game night, the QR code is on the back of the box, and that's the collaboration portion from Orchestra Games who provided that music and that setup. Other than that, there is really no, I would say, like standout negatives to the game. I would just say that if you don't like something that's chaotic and fast paced, this game probably is not going to go well, go over well for you. You really don't have any time for any type of uh, analysis paralysis. You roll the dice, you gotta make a decision, and you gotta keep moving. If you take too much time in this game, you will lose, and 
There's no ifs on their butts about it. Like you have to keep moving and make good decisions, not necessarily the best decisions, but making poor decisions on alien movement can really blow up in your face. Yeah, and somebody who doesn't like the fact that you're dependent on your dice rolls, I mean, this could be frustrating for somebody who hates that as well, because you can have, I mean, there's one mission that we've played that I could not roll anything. Well, uh, one of our other missions, just to add to that, no, I'll let you finish, sorry, is that I couldn't hit the boss for anything, and I need two dice to activate my gun. I miss every single time. It was brutal. We almost lost because of it. it well, that's it. And I, I had, uh, I had monsters nearby. I couldn't get any movement. So you know, and when you have a short range gun, you need to get up close. Now was that character that I was saying that I had to, you know, shoot from one, one away. I couldn't get there. And yes, you can move the monsters when you roll that, but I was just not rolling anything to save me. So that can be frustrating, but that's part of, you know, dice chucking games. No, and one thing that I would say, and I think it showed up, actually it's one negative that I will add to uh, to it was, and I th it stood up more on the laboratory map than the crash light map, is the uh, difficulty of searching and getting to those search tokens. Because you really want to get more gear and chain stuff up. And it's cool once you start defeating bosses as you get alien tech. But in the laboratory, like when I played the first time, I moved my characters outside. I wasn't searching anymore. I wasn't getting any better weapons. And I think that's something that I definitely found uh, fairly frustrating. Whereas on the craft side, it fe felt like you were getting more weapons, especially with uh, a kosha and you can move around. You're always positioning yourself to start with a search token to get resources. And that was really cool. Not possible on the other map. So the way the search tokens work, I think is thematic and works well with the game, but it's definitely not a feature that I love. And I could see how it could be more frustrating in like a four to six player game as there's only three on the map at any time. So is there anything else that you would like to add or do you think we have got everything covered? I Are think you ready to it. score it? Uh, yeah, I think so. So for me, and you might be surprised, I'm gonna give this a seven and a half. Seven and a half. I thought you were gonna go a little bit higher than that with how much you enjoyed the, the game. I rarely give eight or above. If I give an eight or above, it's because it's one of my favorite games that's gonna, you know, but I really did enjoy this. Okay, I would give it, I'm going to give it an 8 just because I really like the game. I love the quick action element. I honestly think that if we get a chance to dive into some of these uh, expansions, also when we we're able to play this with uh, six players, I think your, your score may go up. Because one thing that does happen in co-ops, and I want to mention this even though it's a little late, you cannot quarterback in this game. When you are playing, I mean, you're, there's definitely player interaction and you're talking strategy like, okay, I'll cover this, I'll do that. But the game state is constantly changing. No one player can decide like, you got to do this, do this, 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 this. So that if you're afraid of that and you want to play more co-op games, this is the game for you. It will never happen. So given the name, it succeeds at doing exactly what it wants to do. The minis are great quality, again, from Simon. I've not seen the original Project Elite. This is the redone 2020 version. And uh, I'm hoping that Simon basically just uplifted the game and made it even better than it was before. So far, I've just seen some really good positive commentary on it. So what time is it now, Julie? It's time to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when we have some new content for you. Also, down below in the video description, you'll find links to all of our social media feeds, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. If you want to see Julie and I playing Project Elite, well, there'll be pictures of us playing the game on those channels, well, feeds, whatever you want to call it. And then popping up in front of us are going to be links to some of our previously released content. The first one over here will be our most recent video. The other one in front of Julie will take you back to what this game can cross over with if you happen to got the Kickstarter crossover pack, Zombicide Invader, and then eventually it will take you to a review of one of the expansions when we get to that at a later time. Don't know what we're gonna do. It may be a solo review. It could be both of us playing. We'll see, we got lots of really cool stuff coming up on the channel and we're uh, book solid actually for a good while. It's, it's a lot of fun. So it's time to grab our drinks. Grab our elite best friend. We're going to keep playing games. going to keep playing games. You always enjoy the Simon games, I guess. The only one we really haven't played together is Massive Darkness. And uh, maybe we'll try that one. We played it a little bit, but who knows.